Here is the Hexapod robot. It's designed around a very simple mechanical leg design with all metal brackets. This leg design minimizes the number of parts required to make six two degree of freedom legs and allows the robot to be steered like a tank. Forward, reverse, and in place turning are supported. The robot uses standard size high tech servos for each one of the legs. The body of the robot is made out of ultra tough PVC components, while the legs themselves are made out of high quality aluminum from the servo erector set and servo brackets. This robot uses 12 servos to give it 12 degrees of freedom. Each leg maintains or contains two servos each. The robot is able to adjust its height, walk forward and in reverse, as well as rotate clockwise and counterclockwise, tilt forward and tilt backwards, and move left and right. Here's the Lynx Motion Quadruped. It's a three degree of freedom per leg robot with a symmetric body design. The robot's symmetry makes this a very unique quadruped walker. And the three degree of freedom leg design provides the flexibility required for this robot to walk in any direction. The legs are made from ultra tough high quality aluminum and servo brackets from the servo erector set. The rest of the body is made out of high strength PVC. The robot is about six and a half inches high when standing. That's from its feet to the top of the bracket without the electronics, and about nine and a half inches wide from foot to foot. As you follow your directions for building your quadruped and your hexapod, there's a couple things that we'd like you to notice about the legs, just so that you make sure that your robot's going to work successfully. You don't spend a whole lot of time building things and having to rebuild things. If we look at the hexapod, the hexapod only has two degrees of freedom for each leg. Six legs gives it 12 degrees of freedom. You're able to get the same thing out of the quadruped because it has three degrees of freedom, or three servos for legs, and only four legs. It's going to be very important that you put each one of your servos in the correct orientation. You really follow the instructions and look at the pictures pretty closely as you build them. When you're building the hexapod, go ahead and build one leg, get it completely correct, follow the instructions, and repeat that to build the others. Once you've got that, it's going to be a lot easier if you can just lay that right in front of you and build an exact mirror of it or use the symmetry of that design to create another one. It's going to be the exact same thing when you deal with the quadruped. The quadruped is just going to be a little bit more complicated just because you're dealing with more brackets and servos, but it's really the same concept. Um, Things you need to notice is orientations of the servos, which ones are going to go up, which ones are going to go down. Um, but it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be very important to look at your wire management, plan ahead a little bit as far as where everything is going to go. Take a look at the pictures that we have on the website for the Lynx Motion um, that, are, that are a lot more detailed and you can kind of see the overall picture of it. When we refer to mirroring or symmetry of the robot, we're talking about trying to create an exact opposite image. If you look at these two legs from the quadrupod, you can see that I have servo horns facing in the opposite direction. So I have one set of legs for one side of the robot, another set of legs for the other side of the robot. So the instructions are going to show you how to build one leg and ask you to try to reproduce that process by marrying on the other one. Try to get one side of the robot done first, trying to get both of them that are similar to each other, and then trying to reproduce the others. Do the same thing for the hexapod and trying to keep these both symmetrical. As you can see in this image, one complete side of the robot has all of the servo horns facing towards the front. That's one complete set of legs. All of those are the exact same leg and you're going to mirror those over to their side. As you can see in this photo, the quadruped's just a little bit different. The hexapod has the exact same legs on both sides. So you have three similar legs on one side and three similar legs that are mirrored onto the other side. With this one, you're going to see that the front leg is a mirror image of the back leg and the right leg is a mirror image of the left leg. What you're really doing is creating two of the exact same leg, but they're going to be across from each other or adjacent from each other. So here you can see that the back right is going to be the same as the front left and the back left is going to be the same as the front right. So you're mirrored across the center of the body, both axes 
from side to side and front to back. So make sure you really take a look at your servos and put them in the correct orientation so that you don't have to unbuild it and put it back together. Once you have each one of your servos in the bracket, one of the easiest ways to make sure that everything is configured and built correctly is to come into the SSC32 servo sequencer. What you can see in this panel is all 32 servos that you can control. Zero down to 31 that gives you your 32. You've got a lot of different cool things that you can do into this box. One of the biggest things is trying to actually see what center is. So once you've got a connection to your robot, mine just happens to be on COM14 right now, it's really easy for you to, to get your connection. It's just to open this little box up and come down here to auto. As soon as you do that, it should cycle through the different COM ports that are available on your computer and hopefully you'll get this little found LED and you'll be communicating to your robot. Then what you can do is by each servo you have three different ways to manipulate them. You can either use this slider bar to move it towards its minimum or maximum positions. You can use these up and down arrows to do much much smaller increments to try to drive your servos or you can just come into the box and you can type in the numbers that you want. Other really cool things that you can do is as you drive them, you can drive multiple ones at the same time. You can group them by using these group icons and you can even turn the ones off that you don't want to deal with at this point in time. So if I want to come in here and I want to turn off servos um, 5, 6, and 7, I can do that. And now as I'm working on them, these are now isolated out and I'm not going to control these servos. So you've got a couple global buttons up here at the top that you can turn all the servos on, you can turn them all off, you can center them, and then you can reset this entire screen um, back to the way that it opened up. You even have this sequencer down here at the very bottom that you can create a sequence from scratch just using this servo sequencer module that you have here and, and going through and controlling each one of them. Um, at any point in time, you can come down here to this information icon, and you can open it up, and it'll tell you what each one of these things does and um, how to control each one of the items that are here. And it's going to be the exact same as the same sequencer that you're going to see in each one of the other um, elements of Flobotic Studio. Other things that you have is your calibrate icon down here at the bottom that you can open up that calibrate and you can individually calibrate every single one of these depending on how they were built. And what you're going to find out is some of them may not be able to be calibrated to the degree that you want. Any servos that cannot be calibrated at this point, you're going to have to go and do it mechanically. You're going to have to pull that part of the robot apart, and you're going to have to mechanically adjust the spline that's on the back of that servo into a new position. That's why we suggest you do a lot of this sequencing before you actually put the entire robot together. So again, once you've got your servos into the brackets, come into the sequencer, drive those servos to make sure that you have the construction completed the way that you want before moving on to the rest of it. And make sure that you're following the instructions the way that each one of the images show. In the servo sequencer, you have a couple other elements that I just want to make mention of. Down here in the bottom corner, you have the ability to change the baud rate, and you want to make sure that this baud rate of communication matches the baud rate that you have onto the SSC32. So whether you have it at 9600 or whether you have it at the defaults, you need to make sure that those match so that you have the communication that you want. You also have an ability down here to be able to see and work with your inputs along with each one of the servos. One more really cool thing about the servo sequencer is your ability to control which servos you're working with, especially if you're going to try to group them together. If you're going to try to work on a bunch of servos, typically you're not going to be working on all 32 at one time. And instead of coming around here and clicking on each one of them and turn them all off one at a time, I can come up to this global all off icon. Once I turn the all off icon, it'll turn everything off, and then I can come back and just turn on the ones that I want to work with at that point in time. If I need any more than that, I can either turn on independent ones, or I can turn them all back on and work with them from there.